Okay, how to go from slow, like riding a bike uphill, to, I don't know what kind of car this is. Does anyone know? Is it a Maserati? It looks fast. It's got fire coming out of the wheel. <laughs> how to go from feeling like you're pushing a bike uphill to being in a fast car. Okay, let's do this. What sets, what sets successful? That's a tongue tire. What sets successful entrepreneurs apart? I wouldn't have been able to say that when I had braces. Okay, the first one is that they go to places that their competitors aren't willing to go. So they're actually doing this big steep hill. If you can go to the places that your competitors aren't willing to go, you are going to have no competitors. You're going to have no competition. So for me, I like to exploit that barrier to entry. What are my competitors not willing to do? There are a lot of things that Americans are doing at the moment that a lot of people aren't doing well in Australia. And there's massive opportunities. Things like webinars, a lot of people aren't doing them well. Things like uh, presenting, people aren't doing them well. So if you think about it, the num number one fear, according to a Harvard study, 2000 people, what is your greatest fear? People said, number one, public speaking. And when I heard that stat, I was like, I don't want to speak. I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I'm going to go red. I always went red when people looked at me. But I'm competitive and I don't want, I don't want to be scared of anything. I hate being scared of things. So I like running at my fears. So I, when I heard that most people are scared to public speak, I thought, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to go to professional speaker training. So I went to authentic education and spent five grand and did an amazing presenters course. And I also went to three other speaker training course, one before when I first got to Sydney. So I've spent about 20 grand on speaker training and it's absolutely changed my business. It's totally changed my business. I love it. I absolutely love it now. And I've overcome the fear. And I was, I was known in my family as the person that hated being looked at. I, there was like a family joke, like, don't look at me. Hated people looking at me. So it's not about you've got to be an extrovert, you've got to be an entertainer. It's none of that. In fact, if you're an introvert, you can, you can do great. 70% of speakers are introverts. So it's not about personality. It's not about how super confident you are. It's about how willing you are to learn the skill. It's just a skill. It's like any other skill. And so... The mindset of being a successful entrepreneur is going where your competitors aren't willing to go. Successful entrepreneurs know that the hard road gets easy and the easy road gets hard. What I mean by that is it's actually quite hard to do the things that other people aren't willing to do because you know what everyone wants to do? The easy things, right? The things that don't require a lot of effort, the get rich quick things. That's what your competitors want to do. But if you're willing to work hard and do the hard work up front, I'm not going to lie to you and say it's easy, it's simple, because it does require work. But once you've done the work, your life gets easier and easier. For example, if you set up a funnel, it takes work. It takes work to set up a funnel. It takes work to learn the technology. It takes work to learn how to write copywriting. It takes work to learn how to fill a room if you're going to do a workshop. But once you've done that hard work, your life gets easier and easier. Now I can go on a holiday, like I go on holiday at least every three months, like full holidays without my laptop. I never used to go on holidays without my laptop until I set up these automation systems. I go to New Zealand for like three, four weeks. If you if you're prepared to work hard in, at the beginning, your life will get easier and easier. Successful entrepreneurs have an attitude of action. They, they do whatever it takes. This is different to a nine to five where you're going to show up to your job, do your job, and you'll get a paycheck at the end of it, hopefully. Whereas when you work for yourself, you just have to do whatever it takes. You just have to push through. So I had to learn how to do all this techie stuff. I wasn't techie. I was a personal trainer for 10 years. I was hands-on physical, you know, I wasn't a behind the laptop person. So I had to learn it all. And now it's allowed me to have a profitable business that aligns with my lifestyle. So life rewards action. If you do the work, I promise you it's worth it. So let's look at what you can do. If you have an attitude of action, you can switch from manual to automated. You can automate so much of your business so you don't have to be like doing this clunky old school business. It's not 2001 anymore. It, 
it, you know, it's, you don't have to do all that hard work anymore. You can switch to automated and you can still give an exceptional client experience. You can also build a profitable, scalable asset. So when you've got system in, in place, you've got a scalable business, a saleable business as well. And also it means you're willing to put the work in to have a funnel, a, a, an effective uh, client attraction funnel. So I'm going to show you what that is. So just some examples here. The slow method is just posting general posts to your social media. So just generally, you know, motivation or what you had for lunch or bit of inspo or sharing other people's stuff. The supercharged way is posting educational content. So you're actually teaching your ideal client what they need to be doing in order to work with you essentially like your content has a purpose it's not just content for content's sake you're you're designing content to help people overcome their limiting beliefs their objections to actually taking the next step and in investing in you and in your services the slow way is relying purely on online marketing to get clients the supercharged way is actually doing offline strategies like running your own events. So many people I talk to, they, they say, how do you get speaking gigs? I remember posting up, uh, I got asked to speak at Women's International um, Day and I was already speaking at another event and so many people contacted me and said, yes, I want to speak. And I'm thinking, you want to speak, but you're not running your own events. Like if you've got a great message to share, because that was a Facebook post that I posted. I posted, you know, do you have a great message to share that would really inspire or empower women? And so many people responded to it. And all of these people do have a great message to share, but they should be running their own events. That's how you take control of your business and not just kind of wait for other people to open doors for you. Also the slow way of sending people to your website or your social media handles the supercharged way is actually creating a client attraction funnel. When you create this funnel, you take them from social media and onto your database because you don't control anyone on social media. You can't guarantee that they're going to, I mean, you can't guarantee on email, but for example, I posted something on Saturday night at about six o'clock. I don't normally post on a Saturday night and within 40 minutes, 270 people had opened that email on a Saturday night. Can you imagine posting on Facebook and having 270 people look at your stuff in 40 minutes? It wouldn't happen. Like Facebook's not that kind. <laughs> but people who have said, yes, I wanna hear from you, Kat. Yes, I wanna open your emails. They're actually really wanting to read what I've sent them or watch the video that I've sent them. So social media, you can't control what people see in the newsfeed. So we want to get people off social media and onto your own database. The most important thing, the most important asset that you have in your business is a database. Like a, a CRM, I use MailChimp for example, and you're gathering people's details and you are sending them really valuable content. You're just giving to them. So Jill says, how does attracting people to your website sit with the downgrading of posts when they contain an external link? Yeah. So whenever you put an external link on Facebook, Facebook's not going to show it to many people, right? So that's why you, uh, you can either have a Facebook group. So I find my Facebook group, I can put external links and a lot more people see it. Or I'll put the link in the comments, which does help a little bit. But uh, what I'm doing is building a community getting to know people and then i'm uh like for example doing a video where where people will watch the facebook live because facebook's pushing out videos into the news feed a lot more than posts and then i'll say hey if you want a cheat sheet of this or you want to join uh if you want my freebie or if you want my if you want to join me on the webinar, then I'll pop the link in the comment and then a lot more people will engage with it. So that's why you don't want to just put posts up, but you also want to have like a free offer that you can give to people. Um, same is happening on LinkedIn. And you can also do this through personal relationship with people, you know, inviting people to things personally who are engaging with your posts and your comments.